What is up, you guys? My name is Josh, and my wife Haley and I have a full-time YouTube and reselling business. This means we film ourselves going to flea markets, thrift stores, garage sales, wherever we can buy things super cheap and then flip them online for a profit. I've been doing this for about three years or so, and I've made dozens, if not hundreds, of mistakes in that time frame. So today, I wanted to take you guys along for the ride as we just work on a Friday just to show you what our lives are like. And I also want to talk about, in my opinion, what I think the biggest mistake newer resellers and even some experienced resellers are making on a daily basis. I think this will be a really helpful video for you guys. So hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, stick around. This will be a good one. So this is the area of our garage where we store all of our listed inventory on eBay. Once things are photographed and enlisted, we put them back here in these bins. And I was going to go back here and start pulling some orders we have going out today. But as you can see, it's kind of dark back here. And then when I turn on the light, nothing happens. So we have these light bulbs. We've had these for like a year or so. These are really good. I, I recommend getting the daylight bulbs, especially if you're putting it in an area where you're working, like the daylight is just really nice. We did get one of these lights. I don't even know if you can, you can see it, but it's like, I, we got it from Amazon. It was like 35 bucks, but this thing is super bright. I kind of wish we could put another one back there, but I don't want to have to take that little, you know, little contraption down. So we're just going to replace that bulb with, with one of these mamma jammas. Haley, can you come over here so I can get on your shoulders to change this light bulb? Okay. I think I'm gonna have to climb on the on the shelves. Each of these racks are weighted for like 400 pounds. It's a really good angle of you. I know. <laughs> In the meantime, you guys could make sure you hit the like button and subscribe <laughs> to the channel. That would be great. Shout out to all of you that are currently watching Josh <laughs> replace a light bulb. Still better than cable television, am I right? Is it? Yeah. Every time we watch cable television, it's like, oh, this is getting good. And then they go to a 12-minute commercial break. <laughs> And then like, if okay, so if we were on actual TV right now, I'd be filming you, and then all of a sudden you'd be like, oh no, yeah. what is this? And then the commercial would start. Yeah. And then you'd come back, and it'd be like oh, a dead bug. It's and nothing. Then you're like, we should actually do that in this video. Oh my gosh, what is that? Oh, it's nothing. It's just a bug. Oh, awesome. I dropped the screw. Oh it goodness. Went, it went all the way. Back, oh no. Back, backwards. I see it. Where? Oh, right, right here? here. Yep. I got it. Bold me. Yeah, you know, I said I didn't want to replace this light with that one over there because I didn't want to take the dome off, but I had to take the dome off anyway. So if we had another one of those mamma jammas, I definitely would. Look at there. I'm like Tim Allen. Tim Allen. Tim, the home the home improvement guy. Tim Allen. Tim Allen. That's the, the show Santa Claus. Home Improvement. Home improvement. I don't. Do you, you don't know the show. <laughs> no, I don't actually. Oh my gosh. Okay, we're good. Well, let's see how gracefully he yes. can get down off that of that bug dust. Oh, you have to put that thing back on. Yeah, I gotta empty out the bug. Can you empty that out for me? Really? I gotta do with the bug dust. Bug dust. <laughs> Here, entertain yourself while I'm gone. Good luck with the bug dust. This is a new perspective to the garage that I've never had before. Also, my legs are starting to cramp a little bit. Hey, Mo's. How's the bug dust? No more bug dust. They kind of look like Ooh, Parmesan wow. cheese. Gross. I think the bulb is too big. Oh no. <laughs> <laughs> we'll just leave it down. That way it'll give us more light anyway. Here we go. Oh. Uh. Okay, now let's pull these orders. We have 12 things going out today. I was just looking through eBay to uh, see our first item going out and I just got an offer on these shoes of $15 plus shipping. And that may seem low, but they're only listed for $20 plus shipping. So I found this pair of shoes at Plato's Closet on their during their 90% off. And I think they're originally like, I don't know, $20 or so. So 90% off means we got them for two bucks. And I thought they were gonna be worth a lot more. They're like pretty cool looking like Adidas shoes. Um, but unfortunately they're just like a pretty low, like low demand, like, I, I don't know. There's just no no comps for them. Uh, so we list them for 20 bucks. Somebody offered 15. I'm probably gonna go ahead and accept that. Cause again, we only paid two bucks. So that'll give us a profit of like, what, $11 or so after fees, just moving some stuff out. We're actually in the process of looking for a new house. Um, and obviously we don't wanna move all of this stuff. Like we're we're ready to liquidate. We've been doing a lot of whatnot auctions, trying to move some stuff out. Um, and we have a ton of shoes. Our whole guest bedroom is filled with shoes. So anytime we get a reasonable offer on a pair of shoes, we're probably gonna go ahead and accept that. I love how we still call it the guest bedroom. It is no longer the guest bedroom. It's it the is shoe, the shoe, shoe sanctum. <laughs> shoe sanctum. So the first thing we have going out on eBay is over here in the three bin and it is this Winnie the Pooh uh, like 
It's kind of, it, it's not really a sweater. It's very lightweight, kind of like a fleece. It's a sleep shirt, I believe. Sleep shirt, okay, Winnie the Pooh sleep shirt. This actually sold pretty well, $18 plus shipping on that. They didn't send a message, so I don't know if they were a viewer of the channel, uh, but shout out to uh, Danielle from Valparaiso, Nebraska. That's any Nebraska, right? So 18 bucks on that. We probably paid like four or five dollars for it. Oops, dropped my phone. Four or five bucks for this. Really good picture too. Shout out List Perfectly in there. Uh, Built-in uh, background remover on that, but pretty good. And it's actually light enough. I think it'll probably go first class as well. Heads up. Next up, Danielle also bought this. She has to be a viewer. It's uh, in bin number seven. Occasionally we'll find like random people that buy multiple things from our store, but most of the time those are viewers. Yeah. This is a Dale Arnhart Jr. number eight. Nice. Camo hat. And it sold for $15 plus shipping. <laughs> okay, so I'm looking at the next item. It's a it's a Build-A-Bear uh, plush. And it also sold to Danielle from Valparaiso, Shout Nebraska. Out <laughs> you, Shout out to you, Danielle. This is in the plush bin. Which is the plush? Oh, this one? With all the plush in it. With all the plush in it. No, no uh, <laughs> number here. So this is the Build-A-Bear My Little Pony Fluttersh Fluttershy? Yellow yeah. Pegasus. Sold for fourteen dollars. Yeah, she's got dollars. a little. Oh yeah, butterflies right on her toot. Uh, but this sold for fourteen ninety nine plus shipping, and this is probably one of the ones we got at, at the Goodwill bins a couple weeks ago, right? Yes. Yeah, nice. So we probably have. I mean, we got a whole bag of them for a dollar, so we probably have ten cents into this, uh, and fourteen ninety nine plus shipping. Not too bad. Next up, I'm trying to find our custom skew here. Okay, custom level H. H is down here. H for Haley. H for Haley. Um, are these two? Uh, meat lifters. So fun, the, I knew. I know nothing about. I those. don't either. I found them, and I was trying to find comps on eBay, and I searched rakes, forks, rakes. stabby grabbies. <laughs> <laughs> well, they're Pampered Chef. Yeah, so that's why I got them. We yeah. obviously know that that was a good brand. I think you just picked these up because they said Pampered Chef, and you didn't even know what they yeah, were. But yeah. that's okay. And they sold for thirteen dollars plus shipping. Yeah, I, th I think if I remember correctly, these were these were either one ninety four for the set of two or two ninety four for the set of two. So either way, pretty nice profit. And they sold really yeah. fast. I just listed those yesterday. Ooh, cool. Next item is in the eight bin, which is down here. By the way, I always get questions like, how do we know what item the bin the bin is in? So when you list an item on eBay in the item details section, there should be an option that says custom label or custom SKU, SKU. And anything you put in that section on eBay will show up when the buyer, when the item sells. So we put, we put, we listed the hat, put eight in custom SKU, and then the hat sells and it shows up right under the address. I can't, I can, it'll say custom label eight. So we know to go to the eight bin. If you are listing something on eBay and you do not have the custom SKU or custom label uh, option in your listing, that means you need to go to Google and search how to turn on eBay seller hub. And that will give you a link. And all you do is click that link, sign into eBay, and it'll turn on your eBay seller hub. And then you'll have the option to use the custom label feature and a couple other features as well. You don't have to have an eBay store. You don't have to pay for anything. It's just some weird feature. I don't know why eBay doesn't do it automatically, but that's how you get the custom label option. We get asked that question every day. I will <laughs> so. say too that we get asked often like the rhyme or reason as to like what is in a bin. Yeah. And we have no rhyme or reason why things are where they are. Like Josh is currently pulling a hat, a hat out of bin eight, but people would be like, well, why isn't it in like bin H for hat? Yeah. And we just literally put it where, I mean, there's space for it. Yeah. Whenever, whenever you go to list something, we just, yeah, what it, exactly what Haley said, like the six bin, I could have put it in the six bin. It, do, it doesn't matter. It's, it doesn't matter where you put it as long as you know where it is. Does exactly. that make sense? This is a Chicago Blackhawks hat, dead stock, new with tax. We picked this up at the flea market a couple weeks ago. I think we paid like three or three dollars for it or five dollars so, for it or something. We got a little bundle deal. It's really nice. It's uh coolest game on earth. I think it's actually vintage dead stock. Uh, a little snap back here, but it sold for $19.99. Plus shipping, again, we, I think like maybe three bucks or so for this one. So uh, nice sale. And we actually have another one just like it that is also listed. Uh, and because this one sold, that one should sell pretty soon as well. Shout out to Zach from Lexington, Kentucky, who bought our next thing. It was an awesome sale. Yep. And they're actually out here because we haven't put them away yet. There's no more room in the shoe sanctum. These Adidas Gumball 3000 mm -hmm. shoes. I picked those up at the Goodwill bins a couple weeks ago. Yeah. I was super surprised on the comps on those. Like the white ones are selling for like the $150. The white ones are going for over $100. Yeah. Um, they're just like a rare colorway. 
These sold for $70 plus shipping. So shout, shout out, out Zach. Shout out Zach. Next item sold to another viewer. Her name is Stacy. I guess her. Stacy could be a man's name. Stacy R from Shawnee, Oklahoma. Uh, and they sent a little message with it and said, thanks for the find, Haley. Tell Josh and Moe's hello. Love y'all, Stacy. So Stacy, thank you so much. Haley and Moe's both say hi, I'm assuming. Moe's is over there somewhere. Uh, but these are those Skechers, like, Ugg-like boots that we picked up, I think, at the last video. Yeah. The last video from when we filmed this. I uh, got them at the bins, probably paid two or three bucks for them, and we sold them for $19.99 plus shipping. Uh, you probably listed those a little too low, honestly, because I think there were comps for like 30 to 35, but at least a viewer got a really nice deal. Next up is in the G bin. I found this at that estate sale we went to probably what? A week, last, last week, last Saturday. Last, yeah, but like the last video, last. It was like three videos ago. Three now. videos ago. Okay, <laughs> or something so if like you that. haven't seen that, go check out our estate sale video. We don't usually go to a lot of estate yeah, sales. So but this, this one was cool. good. I picked this up in their little kitchen area. And that's, that was just too cute not to, not to actually pick up. This is a Care Bear mug. Treat yourself to something special. And like it's all over print. And I got the little like heart. Oh, yeah, the, I just noticed that. Yeah, I, I, it's a heart. Yeah. There's no year on it, but it, it is vintage. What, um, what do we pay for? Like a dollar? I think a dollar. Yeah. And I, let's see, I listed it. Maybe I listed it low. I'm not sure because it sold probably in like two days maybe. Um, but it sold for $10 plus shipping. Next thing we have going out is a golf club. And as you can see, we've got a little golf club set up here. I will say that most of the clubs here, except this set of black clubs that we showed you guys in the last video, have been listed for a long time. And typically, golf clubs sell really well in like spring and summer, and we're just getting into spring and summer. So I think, personally, we're gonna go through our store and maybe like end all of our golf club list listings and sell similar to kind of refresh these listings getting into spring to kind of get some of these moved out, especially if we find a new house, we don't wanna to have to move all these golf clubs because these are just our irons. That doesn't include all of our woods. Yeah, all of our there. woods and drivers and whatnot. So everywhere. obviously, I mean, it, honestly, we've got a bunch of those like Callaway Warbird drivers and Adams tight lies, just really common things, but people still want them. Uh, and some of them are listed super low, like 12 or $13 plus shipping. So we might just maybe auction them off, like $1 auctions getting into like the first week of spring. That might be a really good way to, to move them out. But this glove that sold today is a left-handed eight iron. It's gotta be right here. We try to organize them by the club number, but it doesn't, it doesn't go doesn't very always, well. Sometimes. It doesn't always work. <laughs> uh, this is eight iron Callaway Big Bertha. Callaway is a great brand of golf club to be on the lookout for. This is a little older and it's left-handed, which is probably why it took a little longer to sell, but it did sell for $24.99 plus shipping. And this is the reason why we like to list these clubs individually. Like this whole set as, as a set, it probably would have sold a little bit faster, but we might could have got 200 bucks or so for the complete set. Uh, but listing them individually, they take longer to sell, but you generally make a little bit more money. Uh, so that's how we do that. 25 bucks plus shipping on that. I, I don't remember where we got this set of clubs. Probably Goodwill. Uh, so probably have two or three bucks into this club. I think this is our final sale on eBay for today. And it is in the H bin. And this is actually another thing from our bins haul from like two last, days ago. Yeah, yeah, two days ago, which is really cool that we're moving all this stuff so quickly. But I found these. Um, they're new with tag mucklucks, like men's slippers. Really, like, cool. I don't know. Like, it's towards the end of, like, when people are going to be wearing these. But yeah. it's still cool that they sold so quickly. I mean, I listed these probably two days ago. Yeah. And they sold for $20 plus shipping. And those also sold to a viewer. I remember we got a, a message from Oh, them. really? Yep. Yeah. So, th these are to Rob from Omaha, Nebraska. So, thank you so much. Shout out, Rob. I got another shirt over here that's going out direct to viewer. It's this uh, Hawaiian button-up shirt we picked up at Goodwill a couple weeks ago. The brand was Kahala. We paid $4.75 uh, for this shirt, and it sold to a viewer named Luke. Uh, I forgot where he was from. He paid, I think I think it's like 25 bucks plus shipping. His PayPal was like $32, uh, so I think it was 25 plus shipping. So Luke, thanks for the support, man. We also sold this Support Your Friends hoodie to a viewer on Instagram. Her name was Chelsea from uh, something in California. La Mesa, California. She paid $30 shipped for this one. I don't remember. I think I actually got this on Amazon. You did just, get this on Amazon. Yeah, I got it on Amazon. I think I paid like 20 bucks for it. I just thought it was cool um, and, and embroidered it. I didn't know that it was women's like when I bought it <laughs> when I bought it on Amazon. So I tried to wear it and it was just a little, I don't know, it just didn't really fit me quite right. So we listed it on Instagram and sold it to the first person that messaged. Chelsea, thank you so much for your support. Uh, a couple of you guys have asked about our setup for making our own like 
custom embroidery stuff. So this is our embroidery machine. It's a Brother SE600. We got it used from a website called Ken Sewing Center or Ken Sewing Supplies or something. Uh, right now on Amazon, I think the cheapest ones are like 800 bucks. I would not pay $800 for this. I think we got this for uh, 350 and it works great. A couple times it'll mess up, you know, if the needle breaks or we, you know, we use it too much in one day. But overall, we are 100% satisfied with this. And we'll find t-shirts and hoodies and sweatshirts and stuff out at thrift stores at the flea market. And then we'll bring them here and do a custom embroidery with our Support Your Friends logo. I got this whole big box of string over here, embroidery thread. Uh, pretty much every color you could possibly imagine. So whatever you feel, we feel matches the item, that's what we will embroider it with. For instance, this is one of the pieces I just did today. We got this shirt either on Whatnot or maybe somebody sent it to us in our PO box. I'm not 100% sure, but uh, it's made in USA. It's, it's blank. It's just like a purple and green striped. Uh, and then, did I say green? I think I said, I think I said green. Purple and green striped. Uh, and then we did a yellow embroidery on it. I think this turned out really cool. And with this process of making our own shirts, I think it's a win-win for everybody because you know, obviously we're having to spend more of our time on our merch, making it ourselves, but instead of selling a shirt for $30 and making $3 in profit, we can sell a shirt for $30 and make $25 in profit. You guys get really unique merch that's technically handmade by us, and we make more profit for the time we're putting into the pieces. So I think it's, again, a win-win for everybody involved. Don't stop now. I just turned the camera on <laughs> just to see you over I, here. I wasn't really trying, so now I'm embarrassed. Look at there. <laughs> Look at there. You three in a row. No, the, oh. <laughs> Four in a row, could you do what? Oh, uh, no. I'm coming you guys, for you, Drew, throw some flips. Drew, <laughs> that is a direct threat right there. You guys see that black mailbox down there? I was standing right next to the mailbox and did a, a flick throw. Went shoo, boom, right into the basket. A lady was driving her car and she saw it and she gave me a big thumbs up. And it was the best moment of my entire was life. Was it the best moment of your whole <laughs> it life? It was. Moses was there. He saw. <laughs> so we're going to head into the office and get some stuff shipped out in just a second as soon as Haley is done playing d disc golf. But I want to go ahead and tell you guys what I think this big mistake is that I think both new resellers and some experienced resellers are making on a fairly constant basis. And that mistake is over thinking. I will say that this mistake is certainly more common in newer resellers, but I still do it to this day. Like things will happen in our business and I will spend so much time and energy and use resources to fix it or figure out a solution to the to the problem. And I'm like, is this really a big enough problem to deal with this anyway? So for instance, like the, one of the more elementary examples would be like people that just are scared to start eBay because they don't understand shipping. I've seen people in our Facebook group say, you know, I've been wanting to get started reselling for a year now and I'm buying some stuff, but I'm scared to ship and I just have this big death pile now. And I'm like, it's not that, it's not that bad. Like, I think you're just overthinking it. Like I'd say 99% of the things we ship either go first class priority, flat rate padded envelope priority, regular priority, like just weight and dimensions, or UPS ground, like that's four shipping methods. If you just learn those four shipping methods, you can pretty much ship anything your heart desires. A couple things are a little weird to ship sometimes, but the majority of things you wanna sell on eBay can be shipped those four methods. So it's, it's much less overwhelming to think about, in my opinion, if you just focus on those four methods. First class, flat rate, priority, or UPS ground. I will add that anytime we show in a YouTube video where we're sending out a golf club, we always get comments to say, how in the world do you send a golf club in the mail? Like, again, I think it's people just overthinking the process. The answer to shipping anything is usually a box, a box that's slightly bigger than that item. So with a golf club that's long and skinny, you need a box that is long and skinny. So typically with shorter golf clubs like this eight iron or you know, nine iron, something like that, we'd probably use a USPS medium mailing tube. You can get those for free on USPS.com. And if it's longer, like a driver or one of these woods over here, we'll use a longer golf club box that we also get online they are 48 by five by five there's some back here they're a little expensive maybe like two to four dollars a piece depending on how many you get but if the club is too long to fit in a medium mailing tube we just use one of these boxes again it's something that i see a lot of people overthink they're like i can't how do you ship something that long oh my gosh it's so overwhelming but it's not overwhelming just get a long skinny box and you're good to go I was looking through this bag of stuff we were going out to see if there's anything I thought we might get questions about. And we almost always get questions about these clear poly bags that we use. Uh, people are like, oh, what are those? Where do you get them? It's just like self-sealing clear poly bags. And we get them on Amazon. You just go to Amazon, search clear poly bag, and you'll probably find 
I don't know, 10 or 12 different listings. People ask us which ones we buy. Honestly, we've bought from different brands in the past um, and it, it changes frequently. Like, I don't know how they're manufacturing these, but we've repurchased ones that have been good in the past and then the new batch isn't good. So I would just look for ones that have recent reviews that are really good and buy those. And in terms of size, I think these are nine by 13, but honestly, it depends on what you're selling. If you're selling a bunch of t-shirts instead of hoodies and, and thick things, you might can get away with using a smaller bag. If you're selling a bunch of hoodies and overalls and big things, you may need a slightly larger size. And again, I think that's something that people are overthinking. They're like, oh, where do you get clear poly bags from? Where could I possibly find those? And the answer is Amazon. <laughs> like, like where do you find everything else? Just go to Amazon and search for it. Anytime you find something in a YouTube video that you're interested in buying for your business, I would check the links of the description of that video because generally most YouTubers do link all their products in the description of the videos. And if it's not there, just go to Amazon and type in some keywords that you think it might be. And probably 99% of the time you can find it. I think something else that people overthink in business is like how to handle customer issues like returns and, and item not as described claims and, and things like that that inevitably pop up in, in the business when you're trying to sell things on eBay. So the other day we sold this Space Jam Bugs Bunny uh, plush. You can see there it sold for $3.99 plus shipping. Hindsight, I probably shouldn't have listed this at all. Just like going through the process of taking pictures and listing that for $3.99, it, it wasn't worth my time. And of course, we I listed it and it was in kind of bad condition. I put into the description, I wanna show it to you guys. Missing basketball, a little dirty. I put it in there, missing basketball, a little dirty. And I was like, please see photos for details. The lady opened up a return case and she's like, hey, this thing's a little dirty and it's missing the basketball. I'm like, yeah, I, I put both of those things into the description, but I'm not gonna take the time to respond to her and tell her why she's wrong. It's $3.99. So I was just like, hey, sorry, you're not happy. Here's a full refund. I refund her to the original shipping and everything like that. Just, just keep it, don't send it back. I'm not gonna pay for return shipping. Luckily, she didn't say the item was not as described. She just wanted to return it because she just didn't like it. But something like that is not worth my time. Even though she's technically wrong, like it's she got what, what I described, you know, it's not worth my time into going into that the conversation with her. I see so many people like on our Facebook group and on other YouTube videos and things like that, that have a return. Like I sold this shirt for $10 and I've been going back and forth with this lady for three days now about why she can't return it. I'm like, it's $10. Just, just take it. Like, even if she's wrong, who cares? In the time that you spent having this long drawn out conversation with this lady, trying to prove to her why she's wrong, you could have listed 20 more things and made way more money. So just kind of get through like all those little things in business. Like if you look at a big store like Walmart or Home Depot or something like that, they don't care about little things like that. General Amazon, if you open a return on Amazon, sometimes they don't even want you to return the item. They just give you all your money back and they're, they're focused on the big picture. So if you kind of run your business more like those big companies, like really stop wasting time on the smaller issues, I think you'll see an increase in your sales, an increase in your happiness and motivation overall. Something else I see people overthink or maybe underthink if you think about it that way is spending way too much time trying to perfect a listing, like which background looks better, which lighting looks better, like how many pictures should I include in this listing? But the item that they're listing is something that probably is never going to sell. Like like I have this open pack of sewing bobbins from Sewology. I paid $3.99 for it at Hobby Lobby and I've used four out of the six. This item would never, ever, 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 ever in a million billion years sell on eBay. And, I've, and this is a really bad item, obviously, but I've seen people that will spend two days researching, you know, sales history on Terapy or something like that for an item that there's currently 60 listed and two sold on, on eBay in the last 90 days. An item like that is never going to be worth your time. And I think I've seen it really, again, in, in newer resellers, but even some seasoned resellers, including myself, like we buy things all the time that I think would be easy to, easy to list, easy to ship, but then the sell-through rate just isn't there. Like just this morning, I had a three pack of these SodaStream bottles. These are fairly popular. It, it might sell, but I'm like, this three pack is gonna sell for maybe 10 bucks plus shipping. It's gonna be kind of annoying to ship because I gotta have a box big enough for three of them all together and I just decided that it's not worth my time and I think if we as resellers collectively started realizing the value of our time like how much our time is actually truly worth we would realize the error in our ways of spending too much time on items that again will probably never sell or take a really long time to sell and the amount of work we do to get that sale will never be worth it taking a little disc golf break I've got this many discs shout out you guys we've had probably like 
four or five people send us like a bunch of <laughs> bunch of discs in the mail recently. We got a couple of these. We got that cool watermelon. Yeah, where's one. the watermelon? That's my favorite. That's my that's cool. Yeah, that's our favorite. I'm gonna our go favorite. I have this number of discs. I'm gonna try to make it in the basket. Mail truck's coming. Wow. Not starting off too great here. Right. Yeah, he does. <laughs> Y'all hear that? Our mailman just said he does need some practice. Last one. Oh, that was the closest one. Easy. Yeah, you're like five feet away. That's like tap-in distance. So I think that's going to do it for today's video, you guys. Again, not to beat a dead horse here, but just make sure you're not overthinking things in business. When you first get into reselling, if you're like most people, you get really excited and really motivated to start things. And then when you start hearing about taxes and shipping and customer returns and all this stuff, it can feel very overwhelming. But just know that nothing is ever quite as complicated as it seems when you don't have any experience with that. Like the first time I sold something on eBay and I was happy, but then I was like, what do I, what do I do? I got to ship this out. I just... It was an Adidas jacket, and I remember I just took it to the post office, just a jacket, and I asked the lady at the front desk like how I how I send it. I pulled up the the buyer's address on my phone, and they printed a label. I had to use some priority box. Of course, I spent like twenty dollars shipping it. And now that I have more experience, I don't get stressed when I sell jackets because I know they're probably going to go in a padded flat rate envelope, and I have experience now. So just know that the fear and hesitation you have when you first start or you're trying to grow your business to the next level is usually very temporary and it just takes more experience and research and um, just time really to get more comfortable with it so it's not as overwhelming. And then with the other aspect of overthinking, like putting too much time and energy and resources into things that aren't worth your time, that is a dark hole that I and many other resellers have fallen down in the past. So just make sure that when you're in the process of processing your items to sell, just make sure that you're conscious of the time and energy and efforts you're putting into that item and make sure that the potential sales price that you're going to get out of that item is going to be worth all the work up front. Again, that's one thing that you can get really excited. Oh, I found this big thing that at the thrift store for four bucks and it sells for a hundred dollars but how do you test it how do you ship it do you have a box big enough for it how's the sell-through rate yeah there may have been one that sold nine months ago but are there 40 listed you know just make sure all those things kind of align and it makes sense for you and your business okay i'm done rambling i'm sure you guys understand what i've been trying to convey to you throughout this whole video i do want to take a quick second to thank you guys for subscribing to the youtube channel in our very last video i mentioned that like 60 percent of people that watch our videos are not subscribed to the channel. And when I asked you to subscribe in the last video, it worked. Look, I don't, can you see the graph, the little uptick at the very end? That's yesterday when our video posted. So that means a lot of you guys are watching the channel and enjoying the videos. Maybe it just popped up on your recommended screen and you've watched 10 videos in the last week or so. That's awesome. Just make sure if you haven't already to go ahead and click the subscribe button down below. It's totally free. I, I have had a couple people reach out to me and they said they thought they had to pay to subscribe to the YouTube channel. And that's not true. You don't have to pay anything. It just helps us reach more people in the future. So if you have found any enjoyment or value in today's video, definitely hit the like button down below and definitely hit the subscribe button down below if you haven't already. Thank you guys so much for watching. You're the best and we'll catch you guys on the next one.